In this proof of prophethood, I want to focus on how the Prophet, peace be upon him, gave Khalid ibn Walid, may Allah be pleased with him, the title of Sword of Allah. I want you to think about what comes to your mind when someone is given the title, the Sword of Allah. Would you expect them to die in battle? Would you expect them to lose a battle? No, you do not. Now, Khalid ibn Walid fought in countless battles, more than the likes of somebody like Alexander the Great, more than him. He fought in battles where the Muslims were significantly outnumbered. The odds were stacked against them. Yet despite this, the Muslims under Khalid ibn Walid never lost a single battle. Khalid himself, he didn't just take a step back. He was at the forefront, fighting, seeking martyrdom, actively seeking it. And also as well, he used to do, in some battles, he would do 1v1s with the greatest person on the other side, on the enemy side. He would do a 1v1 fight with them and would beat them. On his deathbed, he remarked how in his battles he actively sought martyrdom and that there's not a part of his body which isn't covered with a scar or a mark of some kind from battle. And I want to play a clip from an American professor, non-Muslim professor, Dr. Roy Casagrande. By the time Khalid ibn Wali gets to Firaz, the Persians and the Romans looked at each other and went, we are no, you are no longer the enemy, we have a new enemy. I don't know where these guys even came from. Because you have to remember, at, the, at this point in time, the Persians had been an empire for 1,200 years. And the Romans had officially been an empire, calling themselves an empire for 600 years, but they had been imperial for the 300 before that. Because even before Rome was an empire, it owned Spain, it owned North Africa, it owned Syria, it owned Turkey, it owned Greece, right? And so you have 900 years of imperial history for the Romans and 1,200 years of imperial history for the Persians. There's 21 centuries between those two empires. And they're also technologically the most advanced civilizations on earth. And they had massive populations compared to the Arabs. They're down because of malaria, but the Arabs don't have any rivers. <laughs> they don't have the agricultural capacity to support large populations. The Arabs are outnumbered, they're out technologied, they're out moneyed, they're out experienced, they're out equipped. And Khalid in one year has captured Iraq. Our military was there for eight years. We didn't capture anything. We captured IEDs in the face. So the, the Persians go to the Romans, they're like, okay, we're going to fight this one as allies, right? And the Romans are like, yes, yeah, we're good. Because in the meantime, an Arab army has attacked from this side and is trying to get to Jerusalem. And so the Romans know that the, that the Arabs, you're outnumbered, you're out technology, you're out money, and you're facing two empires. Do you attack both at the same time? That makes no sense, but it's exactly what the Arabs did. They attacked the two oldest, most powerful empires. Either way, it'll work out to be about the same. But make the three of you take three separate paths and then time it so that you arrive at the exact same moment. Bet you can't do it. Now take away GPS <laughs> and navigate at night trying to guess where you think the enemy army is going to be. They're there when the three armies converge at the exact same moment. They catch the Persians asleep in their camp. They tear them to pieces. He's like, all right, one down, two to go. He looks at his men and goes, this is where the Persian army is going to, the next one's going to be. And he tells them, I want you there this day, this time, go. Three different ways. And the three units charge as fast as they can. And they get there. And the Persian army is there. And he destroys that one too. And then he tells his men, all right, we got one more. One more. And go. And they arrive at the right time, on the right day, in the spot where the Persians were at night, and they wiped out the third 20,000-man unit with almost no losses. 
they dispatched 60,000 men in a maneuver that I bet a contemporary military force would never be able to execute, let alone three times in a row. Insane. It shouldn't be provable. But why is this a proof of prophethood, you may ask? Muhammad sallallahu was the one to give Khalid this title. It was a title that no one else was given. It's a title which suggests that he would never lose a battle, that he would be a great military general, that he would always fight and never give up in battle, and he would be active in battle. Now I ask myself, if you're fighting in countless battles, especially when the odds are stacked against you and you're outnumbered, and you're the great military guy, you're the top dog, just simply through probability, you would assume you would die in one of those battles, or that you would lose one. But he never did. It indicates that the Prophet, peace be upon him, had knowledge. And who told him that knowledge? Who was the one that allowed the Prophet, peace be upon him, to give such a prestigious title to Khalid ibn Walid? It is from the creator of the universe, Allah the Almighty.